This is fucking sick. This is a really efficient way to eating. I love eating. I love food so much. I love efficiency. And I love efficiency. And there's just like, you don't have to waste any time like putting your utensils down, switching hands to cut or struggling. To- Real quick, what's your one and only uh, critique and like thing that really like, uh, frustrates you about making food? That I eat it so fucking fast. That's my number one thing. It, we're all here, right? Okay, good. No, <laughs> yeah, I missed it. I missed it. I missed it. <laughs> Why do you cut everything into little pieces? So I can eat it. Quickly? Quickly. What's your one critique about making food? That I eat it too quickly. <laughs> That's your beige flag. Let's go home. With Chime, all you have to do is link a qualifying direct deposit and you've unlocked benefits. Think of it this way. Your hard-earned paycheck could land in your account up to two days early. It's not magic. It's just smarter banking. Overdraft fees, they're like getting caught in a sudden downpour without an umbrella. Unexpected, unpleasant, a significant day ruiner. Well, with Chime, they're a thing of the past. So sign up for a Chime checking account today to link your paycheck. It only takes two minutes and doesn't affect your credit score. Get started at chime.com slash WT9. That's chime.com slash WT9. Welcome back to Wild Till 9. It is currently 11 p.m. And baby, we are up past 9 p.m. today. And I feel great about it. Um, I, I genuinely forgot to ask you about this and I've been saving it for no. right now because we, you sent me a text last night at 1.35 okay. a.m. in the morning. Um, you were still awake. You were on the couch. I was asleep. I ah. was, you never followed up about the text that you sent saying that this, a bug crawled out of our couch last night. One of the centipedes. Shut the fuck up. Right shut, shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up. No, I was, no. I was, I had one hand on my, my glass of wine. <laughs> I just say I had one hand on. Keep going. On my what? <laughs> what, did you, what did you think I had? Uh, one hand on my, continue. One hand on my glass of wine. Uh-huh. One hand on my, uh, I had it in a bag of chips. Okay. And I looked over <gasps> and it no. came up from no. like the bottom, like where we would, where we would typically be like laying. No. Where, we, where, where our bodies would be most vulnerable. A, a little creepy crawler about seven feet long uh, uh, exited the couch. Oh my God. I scurried. I, fortunately, I was able to, I, I, I took the, the napkin that I was wiping my, the Cheeto dust from my yeah. face and I smacked it and I was able to track it and- Did you actually get it? And able to just pow. Did yeah. you actually get it or are you just saying that? No, I got it. You actually got it. You know that I got it because if I didn't, if I hadn't got it, we would be moving right now. Yeah, you're right, you're right, you're right. The, a couple of days ago, a centipede, what, a millipede or centipede? That's what I was gonna ask. Not sure. Can, we I, have, can we get a, can I think we, we get a, I, I, Oh. We don't need a visual for everything. <laughs> yeah. Which one was it, babe? Centipede. The one on the left, yeah, yeah, the centipede. Okay, it was a centipede for sure. I think that's worse. Wow, so mill, millipede's got the, li, the little leggies. Like diggy. Like diggy. Um, there was a centipede that crawled out of the baseboards of the kitchen and I was trying to electrocute it um, violently to be oh, fully yeah. tra- transparent yeah. with the electric fly swatter, the oh, electric centipede roaster. anyone's listening to this podcast and thinks that bugs' lives should be spared at all costs, click next. Okay, well, it depends what bug. Ladybug might be the only exception. Ladybug, dragonflies. Gotta go. You be, can't you be bitten <gasps> by dragonflies? Dragonflies eat mosquitoes can't and they, they need you? to be protected at all costs. They can costs. bite you. I think you're thinking of a dragonfly. What did you say? Oh wait, did I say dragonfly? No, I'm thinking <laughs> of- <laughs> <laughs> The confidence in which I said that. <laughs> I'm thinking black fly. <laughs> I'm thinking black fly. Black flies give you gnarly bites. Dragonflies, I don't think bite. I think they, they do eat mosquitoes though. Maybe they do bite. Do dragonflies bite? Can we get the confidence? No, no, no. Somebody told me one time that dragonflies. <laughs> I carried. Dra- I mean, you looked at me like I have never been more stupid. <laughs> oh, it's a good start to the podcast. Oh man, she's um, real bold. The today. answer, by the way, is they could bite you, but they probably won't. Wait, okay, so then yeah, so a dragonfly what, could bite you, what? but probably won't. Uh, no, when something can bite me, I assume that. I will be 
The bitten. No, okay, so, bu so some bug lives matter in this house. Centipede lives do not matter, and I wanna be very clear about that. No, 100%. Um, but if you are a bug in our house, you definitely have a higher chance of surviving if you encounter me versus Jeremy. Your methods are creative. You are a foot taller than me also too. That gives you so much more everything. So the, the bug that was on the ground. <laughs> okay, so that one. So what, <laughs> so what happened was with that bug is that, so the centipede, I was trying to, I was trying to electrocute it and the electric fly swatter was round and couldn't get into the corner and mm. then disappeared into the baseboards between the oven and the cabinet. Classic. So if you're a, a bug, just hide in a corner. So but I'm just concerned now that that wasn't the same centipede. No, mine's dead. I crushed that thing. Well, no, I'm, I'm concerned if it was the same centipede, then that means it's dead. But I'm concerned that if it wasn't the same centipede- Not dead. Then it's not dead. Yeah, I, I genuinely, one of the, the big things that I'm going to need this construction crew to figure out while they're here tomorrow. Right. Are there any holes in our floor that need to be filled? Because it feels like there's more this year than ever. And it, maybe that's a Los Angeles thing because we finally got a little bit of rain. Mm. Not sure. Mm -hmm. All I know is that I did not move to LA for bugs. Yeah, no, no, I uh, I fully concur. Um, the other thing that I was going to say is that we need show suggestions really, really bad. We are out of shows currently. I thought you were like we're, show suggestions, at like our producer show. Oh, Shoshana. oh sorry, Shoshana. I was no, like no, show no. suggestions. Like you uh, want me to, no, no, sorry. Everyone makes suggestions for our for producer. For our producer yeah, tell to her tell how to us do, to do. Yeah, tell her how to do her job. That's perfect. So that she can tell us how to do our job. Our job, yes. Yeah. No, no, we are on a week to week basis of so many shows that come so out. So we do this podcast every week and. <laughs> Uh, which you might not have caught on by now. Uh, and so, yeah, go ahead. No, I really mean that all of our TV shows that we're watching on a week to week basis, oh. we're all caught up on all of them and we need new things to watch. I am, I mean, for anyone else who's watching Succession, I'm not ready for it to end. Is this the end end? And this next week will be yeah. the end. <gasps> this is how I feel about Ted. There's only two episodes I'm of Ted. I'm ready for Ted to be done. Oh, Ted lost I love it for Ted me. Lasso. Ted is all, it, it's resulted uh, to the cheapest of humor. No. It's like it's like fart joke level stupid. Fart joke, that, that is offensive and I rebuke that statement. So the, we're watching Ted Lasso, we're watching <laughs> Dave, which is incredible. Dave has been really good. Dave. We're watching Citadel. We are watching, what else are we watching? I think Dave might be one of my favorites of all time. Yeah, he is a creative genius. Oh, we also just finished, oh God, one of those stupid, it's the, it's the show on Apple Plus. Oh, the thing that he told me that he said that we, he, The he last did, thing he maybe said to me before he Lannister. dipped. It's with Jamie Lannister and Oddly Jennifer enough, Garner. We're watching a show with Cersei and Jamie Cersei? Lannister right now. That is Cersei. Oh, well, sir. Uh, oh yeah, which show is Cersei in again? Okay, so we really oh, White do- White House Plumbers. What, right, 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 right. I'm not watching that, you're watching that. Yeah. <laughs> But about Watergate? And if we're just gonna, if we're gonna throw in other shows, I'm also watching uh, RuPaul's <laughs> Drag Race All Stars. There's, oh, there's, there's always new RuPaul, always. Uh, it is kind of like The Bachelor. Always. It is kind of like The Bachelor where yeah. there is, we're, we're in a cycle. He really has grown quite an empire. Yes, it, it is. It is quite impressive. It is quite yeah. impressive. Um, so Jeremy and I, was that today? No, that was yesterday. Then we got our Botox touch up. Yesterday. And so- We say Botox, but we don't get Botox. We got Dysport. So I got a new face. How's it look? Wow. You know what's funny? When the doctor, or in our case, the nurse practitioner mm -hmm. says, look angry or be surprised. <laughs> it's the funniest. It's, it's so endearing. In that moment. It is so endearing. I could give you any emotion except for, except for anger. No, the way that your eyebrows went in the exact okay. opposite direction of where they were supposed to go. And she's right. like, nope, other side, other what's, way. What's funny is other the way. only way that I was able to like, in, like think about a thing that mm -hmm. would make me like- Is how? Aggravated. Is how? <laughs> how? thinking about- uh, Yeah? I, you know, I've lost track. I'm not kidding. I, I literally thought to myself of like when I've <laughs> told you something a thousand times and you asked for the thousand and first time and I'm like, what? Why didn't you fucking listen? The that was what I thought of. That's so romantic. It is romantic. Yeah. And I'm so glad that was effective you for you. You can fulfill that role for me. I'm so glad. Yeah. Do you want to tell people what happened? Um, no, not particularly. Next topic. <laughs> <laughs> I got lip filler for the first time in like- So we were in a new place with new people and new injectors. And I have a fun tradition that I like to play mm -hmm. for all of my new injectors yes. as the new injectee. And that's to pass out on the table, mid shot. 
Jeremy goes, his face goes white, his lips go white. He's like, good night. I still think that, <laughs> what does it look like from the outside? Um, You don't look good. You don't look good. So uh, you, you you were like, you were, I, I love you. I love you. But mm. it, there's also just like something so like unsettling about when like a human face loses the color. You know what I mean? Like it, like health wise, right. it's not my favorite. It's like Needles, watching like an old silent movie. Sure. Mm. Yeah. Close, close, mm. close, 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 close. But your face, I saw the sweat start to beat around your hairline. Um, <sighs> How's the hairline look though? It, hairline looked great. <sighs> great. I mean, never looked better. It was so luscious. All naturally. Yeah. All naturally. MD hair. Yeah. And, um, <laughs> <laughs> and and then you said you said I'm I'm gonna pass out and I was like oh shit she put her needles down and she went and got you a little juice she box she didn't quite take them down that quickly though what it's like she got a couple more taps in there and no, I was like Ugh. no 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 <laughs> no do not do bell like that it's like oh god <laughs> she had a juice box in your hand within like sixty seconds we had the ice pack on the back of your neck I was holding up the little fan on your forehead cooling your little hairline sweat beads. And um, eventually the color did come back into your face. I feel as if it may not have been prudent to have a very small breakfast and then chug a Celsius before getting needles to the face right in the morning, especially when you know that you don't like needles and have a tendency to pass out. I don't, I don't like needles. It's not my thing. I used to have this girlfriend in high school whose like parents were obsessed with giving blood. Okay. And I, I'm not like, that's what they, like they did this thing, like every, however often you can do it, mm -hmm. that's how often they did it. Mm -hmm. And like, she would go like clockwork. And, and so this was your, this was your and way as, of flirting. When you're a, like, when you're like the boyfriend <laughs> and the family of the girlfriend that you're oh, dating. you're giving and, blood. Like you're giving yeah. blood. Yeah. And I remember telling him like, hey, by the way, like, just so you know, I can't remember the last time that I gave blood even just for like the doctor, which mm -hmm. is not that much and didn't almost pass out. Mm -hmm. So just be aware. And the first time it happened, and the second time it happened, <gasps> and the third time it happened, and I think it was the fourth time when the like the person who runs like the blood donation place was when like, when he was like, "Don't come back. We're we're actually yeah. we don't need more O positives. Yeah, we're good. We're yeah, good. we're good. Stay home. Yeah, stay like, home. If it was you know a universal donor, maybe, but mm -hmm. like we're good on you. Yeah, <laughs> you you take up our chair <laughs> more time than it would be if we just didn't have you. <laughs> right. Therefore, like yeah. we, we actually get more blood for yeah. the donation clinic if you just didn't come. And I remember thinking to myself like. Yeah. Wow. That's great. Yeah. That's great. We all just do dumb things for our high school boyfriend and girlfriend. Sure. Sure. And your forehead looks great. Thank you. And your smooth glass forehead is here to tell the tale. I love when my like boomer friends are um, like trying to lecture me on my boat. Mm -hmm. You don't need Botox. You look great. My dad literally said that today on FaceTime. He was like, at your age, you're getting Botox. My mom was like, Greg, they all get it. Well, <laughs> that literally was their what, interaction. What age would you like me to start getting Botox? You know what I mean? like, right, right. Like, when it's too late. But like, yeah, what, what age? When it's too late. But also, I am very not so proactive about a lot of things mm -hmm. of my body's concerned. And my forehead wrinkles are the one and only that seem to be like clockwork, probably because you did the scheduling. I was going to say, I but think we know. I'd like, I'd like to say that if for the next 20 years people go, you don't need Botox, you look great, money well spent. And we have me to thank for the scheduling. Yes. We, you need to wear sunscreen though. Yeah. I don't, you say that as if I, I, I'm seeing a ton of sun. <laughs> That's true. You're so right. Actually, you don't get any vitamin D. You're so right. Actually, you are probably the one exception to yeah. <laughs> like the everyone like, should collectively wear sunscreen. You are day. probably the yeah. literal one exception of the tech nerd who does not see the sun. Hmm. You know what? There's probably a lot of gamer guys out there who probably also don't need to wear sunscreen. Right. Not that this, this should be a general PSA that everyone should wear sunscreen right. just to avoid the age spots, but you probably are a low risk individual now that I'm piecing this all together. I'm getting a, a pretty, pretty substandard amount. <laughs> yeah. Like I'm probably- Do you take vitamin D? You should. I do. Okay, good. Yeah. Great, 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 yeah. great, great, great. Um, I also got lip filler for I also got lip filler for the first time. Yeah, if Lauren in looks like she's got years. fucking flappers over there, <laughs> my god! I'm just feeling a little stiff still. Yeah, I'm feeling a little stiff. You look cute. I'm so happy with them. Yeah, I'm so happy with them. I feel like lips are a very scary endeavor. Oh my god, so scary! I think that I also have gotten better and better injectors each time. So I've only done it three times with three different people. I think I went back for a touch up with one with the first doctor, but I've gotten a better injector every single time. Yep. And I feel like I know also now what to expect in terms of like what my lips are gonna do. But wow, big fan, but hurt like a 
bitch. I she was up in that face of yours. Oh man. Yeah. Oh my god. I my makeup artist raw dogs lip ejections with no numbing freezing cream whatsoever because he thinks that it, it like it makes it it so it's more precise and right. like better disperses. Okay. And I think it's probably, you know, in the same vein as like how tattoo artists don't like when you use numbing cream because it could also like make the skin weird. Really? So yeah, yeah, yeah. So like I totally get that, but I cannot imagine can't imagine, can't imagine. Oh, the meaty parts when the needle, not to like make you a little queasy, but when the, when like the needle was just like in the meaty part of like the thickest part of your lip, it's just like, uh. Ah, fucking, I, there's just that, <laughs> I couldn't do that. Um, But I'm very happy. In and fact, I, I don't want to see the needle. I think that's the only reason that I feel like I can do this because I can't see the needle. What do you if mean I, you can do this? You can't do that, you passed out. But like, it doesn't scare me. <laughs> right. But like, if I could see the needle, I would be scared. I mean, you did a good job vlogging mine without passing out. I'm not as worried about you as I am me. But it's not about me, it's about the needle, I thought. Right, a little bit, but it's, there's hierarchies to it's, this. It's like out of character for me to not be scared of needles, I feel like. No, it's wild. Like right? The fact that you're so just like, yeah, when it comes to like sharp objects yeah. is my potentially least favorite part about you. Yeah, that is <laughs> out of character. For me being like a big baby in like yeah. a, most areas of my life, I feel like that is quite out of character. You can work yourself up about a disease that has not existed on this planet for a thousand years. A hundred percent. You eat a piece of chicken that is a little bit cold, you think you get polio. <laughs> Okay, no, those two things are not connected, but maybe. Exactly. <laughs> but maybe. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. So that was our day yesterday, and um, lips are. I can't. I can't um, rub my lips together. Like you know when you put lip balm on and yep. then you rub your lips together. I can't do that right now because they're still a little stiff. Yeah. And it's a very odd sensation. So if anyone's been wondering how our, our bedroom life's been the last twenty four oh, hours, it has been popping. The DSLs are <laughs> out to play, baby. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, I went, oh my God, this is so exciting. So I have done so many wedding dress related videos for the sake of entertainment and content YouTube, like buying wedding dresses from Wish or buying wedding dresses from, you know, wherever, so-and-so. And so I've never tried on a real wedding dress. Um, that's actually a total blatant lie. Actually, I just realized I did try on one wedding dress when I tried on engagement party dresses back wait, in January. Wait, hold on. I feel like I've seen you in a thousand white dresses. I mean, yeah. But none of them were wedding dresses? Well, no, they are, they are, they are, they are. But I've never been to a, <sighs> see, this is less exciting now. And I'm, I'm. it's because it's my own fault. You're it's just lie to me, I don't mind. I tried on, I went to my first, this isn't a lie. I went, I had my very, very first wedding dress try on bridal boutique appointment. Did you want to tell everybody how you uninvited our producer <laughs> who's listening to this podcast <laughs> in the other room right now? She was going to come and help me shoot. And I had to I had to uninvite her and my assistant who were going to help me uh, because they only give you, they only give you um, three people. Oh, it's a plus three. And I and had- And I was plus four, right? You're not invited. Okay. Unfortunately. Okay. So Maggie was gonna come with Shosh and Kate and I. Right. And we're gonna get content and stuff. And then Mia wanted to come. And then Mia had breakfast plans that day with Remy. And so it was a, it was a two for one deal situation. Right. Right. And so then anyways, but I have an appointment coming this Thursday and Shosh and Kate are coming. For now. Show. <laughs> no, for now. No, no, no. I, I have it. Stop told. <laughs> Jeremy, I'll hang out with you. That's fine. Yeah, I'll be around. It's fine. I know. And it's so fun. They only give you a 60 minute period, which makes sense because you're obviously like not, for the most part, the amount of people who actually make a purchase on a day-to-day -day basis, I feel like in bridal boutiques is probably relatively low. So like, I understand why they're not gonna like let you come in there and play dress up all day. But I was so wedding by the end of this oh, appointment. Oh my God. Some of those dressing rooms too. I feel like, because places that, get those locations, mm -hmm. have to like set up their own kind of like try on rooms and they don't always have ventilation. Like- Oh, there was no ventilation in the try on room the for The last sure. couple of times I've gone to like get fitted for a suit. Yeah. I'm like, I'm like sweating through like oh, no, a I suit was like, that's not even mine yet. And I was, feel icky. She was lacing up the back of my dress and I was like, I'm so sorry. Like I'm I'm sticky right now. You're a, you can get- I'm a, I'm a sticky bitch. I know, I get it. Okay, I don't know about sticky. You literally, came over, rolled over to me last night to cuddle. And you said, you're sticky. I'm gonna go. And then you <laughs> roll the other way. <laughs> I will not be 
discounting. I'm a, I'm a hot sleeper. You do sleep like a fucking sumo wrestler. Okay, I have a TikTok to show you. I this I was planning on just showing you this like in regular, not on the air, on the pod, but right. I feel like because we're here, I have to show radio? you. What? Is this a this live is, radio yeah, show? this is live radio okay. show. Um, but there's this girl who was talking about if you have night sweats because you are on antidepressants. Uh-huh. And- You're on an antidepressant, are you? Yes, I am. <laughs> that you're on like, is that an SSRI? And yeah, an SSRI or oh, okay, SNRI. Yeah, yeah, antidepressant, anti-anxiety. Um, uh, they, you think this is, you think this is oh natural happy? I don't know what's going on, but something needs to change. Because <laughs> at night you are quite literally a liability. Okay, but would you rather have anxious, sad Lauren? Or would you rather, rather have sticky only at night Lauren? This multiple choice test could use some editing. A or B? Uh, B, the answer whatever is Whatever version you are right now is great. So you've landed your first big kid job. Congrats. It's time for the real deal. Now let's talk about money habits. They're not quite as satisfying as a milkshake or in my case, a slash current obsession and creamy, but they're so good for you. Let's dive right into Chime, your new BFF in the world of finance. Imagine that one friend who's always got the inside scoop on the hottest spots to eat, the best sales and the trendiest pop-up shops. Now imagine that friend helping you manage your money. That's Chime for you. Managing money is not something that you just know how to do right away. When I was working at my, uh, like my very first job under the table ice cream shop in when I was 50. Did you say under the table? Under the table. You can't say under the table. Why? <laughs> <laughs> oh, They're closed now. Oh, under the table. Yeah, under the table. Never mind. Seaside. I, yeah, I take it back. Shout out Seaside ice cream. <laughs> I remember how surprised I was to find out just how easy it was to spend a paycheck, especially when you're being handed cash and break a law. under the table. <laughs> if I had something like time to guide me, who knows how much of that money I would have saved. I like you're calling it a paycheck when it's just cash being just handed cash, to you. a wad. Yeah, with Chime, all you have to do is link a qualifying direct deposit and you've unlocked benefits. Think of it this way. Your hard earned paycheck could land in your account up to two days early. It's not magic. It's just smarter banking. Overdraft fees, they're like getting caught in a sudden downpour without an umbrella. Unexpected, unpleasant, a significant day ruiner. Well, with Chime, they're a thing of the past. We're talking fee-free overdrafts up to $200. And the best part, Chime has no monthly fees, no minimum balance, and no deposit required to become a member. So you can start right now, right, right, right this very moment. So sign up for a Chime checking account today to link your paycheck. It only takes two minutes and doesn't affect your credit score. Get started at chime.com slash WT9. That's chime.com slash WT9. Chime is a financial technology company, not a bank. Banking service and debit card provided by the Bancorp Bank NA or Stride Bank NA members FDIC. Early access to direct deposit funds depends on payers. Spot me, eligibility requirements, and overdraft limits apply. See chime.com slash spot. Last night I saw this TikTok that said, if you take medication for your mental health and you what a nice way of saying that. Night sweating buckets, oh, my fridge has been open for too long. You should eat a pickle before bed. And apparently it helps because of the electrolytes. So I'm trying it tonight. I'll let you know if it works. Oh, wait, it's electrolytes? Okay, wait, so should I just be drinking Gatorade before bed? I didn't realize there's a lot of electrolytes. I thought it was something pickle specific. <laughs> Update on Picklegate. Please ignore the zit on my lip. Even if you don't like pickles, I highly recommend eating some pickles before bed because I didn't wake up sweating. I did eat four pickles, if that matters. Easy. But I'll take it as a win. Four pickles? I Appetizer. If there's one scent in this world that's... <laughs> Worse than everyone's uh, like the typical like garbage yeah. like what New York Poopy. City like smells like typically. Mm -hmm. It's the smell of pickles. No, no, it's not pickles. It's specifically vinegar. Yeah, vinegar makes me it's want to jump off Jeremy. several cliffs. So I can't do the pickles because you'll break up with me. You'll leave me. But no, it do we try? We do, do we bedrooms? try like a a uh, uh, freaking prime hydration? Just sent their lemon one. That one was pretty good. Do you think it's actually an electrolyte thing? I can't imagine a world where you haven't already tried this. I haven't, I really haven't. You haven't tried to hydrate yourself before you go to bed? Not with water. I mean, not with, <laughs> oh my God. 
<laughs> I have two brain cells. That's what happens when we record it late at night. I drink a lot of water throughout the day. Okay. But why don't we try Gatorade? Should I try a Gatorade? Try Gatorade. Well, I have a prime. Okay, or a prime. I have a prime. I got the. They just sent the lemon prime or whatever. It's pretty good. It's delicious. Actually. Yeah, it's quite nice. Yeah, it's, it's delicious. Quite good. Yeah. Uh, um. Okay. I so threw vodka in it for um a friend of for, ours. Yeah, and it was good. She loved it. Yeah, you couldn't even taste the and vodka. I poured the shit out of that vodka uh-huh. too. Yeah. Um. Okay. Well, this is prime. This is this is officially prime sweat gate. I feel like you've been sleeping better though. I actually have a really important scientific question. Mia and I had this discussion and Mia and I see this the same and Jerry sees it differently. Okay. Okay, so if you're driving in the car and mm-hmm. you're hot, what will you put the AC settings on? Uh, I, The only thing that's really not all that, like my AC is almost always on all the way low, but on the lowest fan setting. Okay. So like, it's probably already on cold. I mm-hmm. would just, I would just mm-hmm. need to turn mm-hmm. it, the fan on to like two or three. Mm-hmm. But like, I hope, like, I keep my AC yeah. on low. Okay. Which is Tesla stops at sixty degrees and okay. just goes to low. Uh-huh. So uh-huh. mine's always on low. Okay, interesting. Why? Interesting. Well, there, me and I were just in agreement that like, if the car is seventy-two degrees mm-hmm. and we're hot, we'll just put it all the way at low and put it at like, like fan level eight, nine, or ten until we're not hot. And then find like the neutral territory. The only time that like I'm on like the highest high or the uh-huh. lowest low is right when I get in the car. Oh. After that, I'm gonna I'm gonna need to it's to to play the little like adjustment game. A little adjustment game. Yeah. Okay. 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 But like you only make <laughs> rash corrections when it comes to temperature. It's like you go from a heated blanket <laughs> to I stripping scream. naked yeah. AC and like sitting in front of the vent like a dog. <laughs> I just, I think my body's bad at just neutralizing though. I think it's a body thing and not a me thing. Or like in the summer, if you get cold, you'll go turn the gas heat, like the fireplace on. That I will not do that. If you weren't home, I might, but. You will turn it on, which then like, it then heats up and is then this like 600 degree, just like massive thing. It just heats up so fast. But now that I have the heated blanket, I can do it in isolation by myself and it affects no one except me and Bubbies because Bubbies also loves the heated blanket. I love that for you guys. It's great. It's a great journey. You know, like your temperature issues are interesting. It's, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I don't know what's going on. Uh, and I do think it is medication related because it, the night sweats for sure are medication related. I also think that body hair is a big help here. You think like a, like a dog, it just wicks it off. Right, because I think that, you know, like some dudes are just like cavemen. Yeah. I'm not that. But also some dudes are like just naked mole rat. Yeah. I'm not that. Mm. I feel like I've got a light smattering all over. <laughs> so it's like I've Give got just smattering. enough yeah. all over the place to not have this naked like area that doesn't know how to like regulate itself. I wonder if that's why I get like- Can we factor check that show? <laughs> I'm pretty sure that it has this something. This is a science podcast. Once again, this podcast. is a science podcast. Everything you hear is the facts. And in fact, this is investment advice. So I'm not sure what you would invest in after I just said body that. Body hair. But invest in it. Yeah, body invest hair. in body hair. Invest in body hair. Because I wonder- Body hair does help with temperature regulation. I <gasps> knew it. Yeah. Dudes are out here regulating. Wow. Yeah. I don't even have the option. I well, lasered it off. You did. I lasered you did. it off. I'm going to go laser my back hair pretty soon. I'm you, not interested in you, having that. You have like six back hairs. I know, and I want them gone. Okay. I do, like there. There's places where I don't mind hair. Mm-hmm. The the tops of my shoulders is <laughs> is is one of the the places that you don't. That's an easy place. But like that's not a place that I don't. I didn't come into this world yeah. prepared to have, have like, shoulder hair. Yeah. Yeah. Like I, I do you ever catch a catch a glimpse of it in your yes. in your peripherals? Yes, I do. Wow, that's exciting. No, Welcome it's, to puberty. It, it, yeah, thank you. Uh, <laughs> not here next. I, I, like, I just, that seems to me like a grimy old man. Shoulder hair? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we can pluck it. No, 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 no. That's another thing. The woman that I love and like to have sex with cannot sit and pluck individual shoulders. Please, come on. Why would you take that away from me? I would Please. rather have every single one of my exes pluck my shoulder hair than you. I'm sure that they would also love that. Just inflict a little bit of pain on you. No, no, I, I think that, no. No, I think that would be weird. I, it would for sure be weird. If I had I'm to just pick saying, an ex to do that, I'm not sure who I'd go with. Okay. Yeah. What I'm saying is that I would really enjoy doing that. I think that'd be wildly satisfying. By to- the, that'd be such a fun like um, reality TV game or like game show where it's like you have to pick different exes for different like, challenges. Ooh. And of course, like, you know, the winning team yeah. wins something. Yeah. That'd be a great game. That would be really good. Yeah. There's an idea. Yeah. Yeah. Pitch it. I just did. Pitch it. Call me, somebody. Pitch it. 
Um, but circling back to wedding dress shopping really quick. I put a poll out onto Instagram because I feel like now that I've I've talked so much about like our process and planning and shopping, um, I've had so many really interesting conversations. And so I put a poll out for other Ooh. brides and I was just curious to know how many people, because I feel like in the movies, like when a girl tries on like the dress, they start crying and everyone's like, oh, this is the one, this is the moment. And everyone's just like, when you know, you know. I just don't think that I'm gonna have that moment. I really don't. You say that, but we had that with the venue. Yeah. I had that with the ring. But like, I'm I probably gonna you. try, that's true. You know, I had that with a lot of things. Maybe. Yeah. Me, I just don't know. And I don't know if it's because I've tried on so many white gowns for different videos right. and that I've like already shattered the like magic of this for myself. I did myself a disservice over the years mm. of YouTube. I think you'll be fine. But I, I like, I just can't envision myself having a moment where I get like teary eyed being like, oh, this is the one. You basically did that on a venue that was like empty. It was just, we were- I did not do that, I was mad. I was actively angry. Yeah, but like same, same difference. It is, yeah, like, the, I mean- You were mad there's, because- there's, there's crossover in there and emotion you thought to yourself, sure. I'm gonna spend- This is the perfect How much I know. on this knolly grass, grassy knoll, grassy knoll? We're not on a grassy knoll. There's grassy knolls around us, right. but, but there's like, no grassy You're looking knoll. out onto yeah. a polo field. Yes. We don't even play polo. No, 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 no. But I want I want that look. I want that vibe. I want oh that God, feel. I mean, it's the most exciting exactly. venue. Well, we're doing it. So, so I did I did have that I did have that feeling, but I just I don't know. I don't know. So anyway, Lauren's the, the stressed pole. as fuck with this whole wedding dress thing because uh, she keeps on having these conversations with people who want to give her wedding dresses, and she doesn't know how to like like prioritize. I committed all of these. to a designer already. I did. It's done. It's done. It's done. It's done. So you already know who's gonna make your dress. Uh huh. I'm finding out about this right now. But it's custom. I'm finding out about this right now. Live. Wait, hold on. So, on but, air. But, but okay, how is it? Hold on. <laughs> hold on. Hold on. <laughs> so you already know what you want then? Or no, you, I have no, I don't know. So you, you try on stuff that they've already made? So, so uh, I've learned so much in this process. So most majority, obviously there are so many wedding dresses that you can buy just off the rack and then you have them altered to fit you. Right. But like the traditional wedding dress kind of process is that you have to buy your wedding dress so far in advance because each one is custom made to your measurements. Right, which and, is thicky dumpy. Which is thicky dumpy. But what are you gonna do if your ass grows? Cause you've been like stacking them cheeks lately. I well, I think you do final alterations closer to the time. Okay, got it. But you, you order- You leave room for more thicky. You leave a little room cause being like, oh, the, the, the thicky might get a little more dumpy. The dumpy might right. get a little more thicky. Right. I don't know. And so you order the dress custom. And so like, just say there's a design that you really like, um, you can add sleeves or change the neckline or whatever it might be. You can make small alterations. Thoughts on the sleeves. I didn't think that I would be a sleeve girly, but I have tried on a few different oh, sleeve, sleeve dresses. Girl. And the sleeves are really pretty. Okay. And then the neckline. Ho. Oh. Okay. Yeah. For the, that rack of yours? Yeah. Okay. I got to show off these tatters. Yeah, no, totally. Um, uh, what's great about us is since our, <laughs> all of our grandparents are dead, you don't have to hear from oh, yeah, no. anyone's mom about how, yeah, well, don't, you're that not gonna see your tattoos. I would, I would never, that would, that would never happen. That my side of the family, I feel like was never. Uh, really? Like yeah. Japanese culture is like very hot and cold with tattoos. Oh, no, no. Japanese culture is very, very specific about tattoos, but I'm fourth generation. Okay. Like my, like, my mom. I do know. I, yes, I, yes, I, I yes. Got, we're born in Canada. I understand how that counts. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah. So I'm, although- And as first like, generation of my name. Oh, here we go. Yeah. Like I, I think that my mom's hatred towards tattoos is not because she's Japanese. Okay, right. M maybe, maybe there's like some underlying PTSD issues weaved in there or some kind of like folklore trauma right. weaved in. Folklore <laughs> trauma? I don't know. I have no idea. But I think it's a Gale thing and not like a Japanese heritage thing. Right. Yeah. I just think that like tattoos- uh, at people who got tattoos when they were teenagers mm -hmm. were rebelling uh, and that's just not the case anymore. No, it's really not. Right. I mean, if we want to have the whole tattoo conversation, just sign me up. I'm I'm, I'm good on that yeah. only because I don't want it to be referenced the next time we're with your mother. Yes. And then she gets when secondhand mad at you because we had this we conversation. We said that you said that I should get a no. specific tattoo. No, right. no, right. I didn't say that. So you make, you pick your 
dress okay. and then you customize little bits and pieces depending on the bridal boutique or the designer, et cetera, of like who, who you know, who's making it. So it's a one of one. It, a lot of times, yeah, it's a one of one. Got and it. even though it might be the exact same, it's still, I guess, be considered one of one if it's made to your exact measurements. Right. So I'm continuing on with two more appointments this week and the following week until I get to my real appointment Wait, because- No, no, I haven't picked, I've picked the designer. You're just wasting people's times. What do you mean? Wait, you picked the, so what are you going to do? What are you going to see? I'm trying on different styles of dresses. With no interest in ever buying them? I have to do my homework. Going back to the whole thing with how nobody ever buys anything, that'd be annoying. So you're just gonna go sit there, sweat through a bunch of people's like linens and then leave? That's the point, to go try on dresses. That's a large investment. It makes you feel better. I also know where I'm getting my suit. Really? Slash tux. Yeah. Where? Tom Ford. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, you get all, I feel like yeah. that, that just fits you Same really well. Same as last time. Yeah. <laughs> Do it again. Run it back. Round two. Uh, my guy Sasha will be there. I was gonna say, there. is he still there? He is still that's there. That's perfect. He is. That is yeah. perfect. Yeah, he, uh, I will be um, uh, made, making the, actually, yeah, mine will be custom too. Yeah, right, because it yeah. has to it has to be made to your measurements. Yeah. The wedding industry is interesting. The wedding industry is fucking crazy. It is crazy. Anytime the word wedding gets associated with it, right. it's just the price gets jacked up. Like right. I think of there was um a venue, uh it's called Lombardi House. I've been to so many yeah. like PR events there. You know yeah. what I mean? Uh, the random Lombardi on it or what? Lunches and shit like that. And as soon as you add that it's a wedding, like the price triples. It's crazy. It is crazy. I don't know why it's such a, it's like a, it's such a scammy Can like Can we rebrand our wedding and call it more of like- um, A love celebration? A, a one night only event. Mm. A, mm. Um, mm. A, 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 a smattering of friends getting together to watch two a people. Uh, the only word that I have associated with smattering now is, is about your, related to your chest hair. So that's- uh, of, No, it's, it's my, my, my back hair. A smattering of back hair, you're right. Yeah. It was a bad smattering of was shoulder back. hair. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Even better. Yeah, you, Even are you better. On? <laughs> uh, yeah, so that's where I'm at. Okay, so, and then, okay. All right, so you're gonna go on and try a bunch of people's dresses on that you have no intention to, like, intention to buy. I mean, it's not other, like, I, I think that this would be ethically wrong if I was going into very specific small designer showrooms right. and, like, doing it very, that personal route. Okay. But I'm going into, like, like, bigger box stores. Got it. If that makes sense. David's Bridal. David's Bridal is going out of business. I'm shocked. Really? I'm shocked. You know what though? It didn't surprise me just because of how much inventory I feel like they have to like keep on hand. I guess, but yeah. like they've got so many affordable options that I'm just shocked that they weren't, aren't able to stay in business. But I mean, I guess there's so many pretty white dresses that aren't even, cat you know what I mean? Yeah. Like the, you slap, again, you slap the word wedding on it and it's crazy. I mean, it's interesting because I think there's like such a stigma around not, wearing somebody else's wedding dress, yet you, you're only gonna wear your own dress once and then it's just gonna take up space in every house you ever have ever. Oh my God, 100%. Literally like, after doing my last YouTube video uh, with the the eight dresses, I was like, that was the my favorite part of the whole video was totally off camera was sending bride to bees those eight dresses, even if they don't end up wearing them for them to have. That? Yeah. Really? All the dresses from that last video went to eight brides. Really? Yeah. That's what, cool. What am I gonna do with it? I, I, said, if, I said, if you're having your wedding and need a dress, let me know. Let me know if it, we're a similar size. That's cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, what am I gonna do with it? I don't know. I just love the idea because there were, honestly- You're just much more thoughtful about that shit than I am. Okay. Yeah, Thank like you. <laughs> to me, it's like, now that I, my use is done with this, I would like this to not be here anymore. Yeah. And like, if someone's, you know, here and could take it, great, Honestly, but it's not. Honestly, I was looking at some of the like, uh, wedding dress store donation places and it was really difficult. They make it really yeah, hard and it's kind of expensive to like ship it to places. And so I was like, this will just be so much better and more personal for someone yeah. who's like, you know, watch the content and was like, oh, I, I, now I've seen it on maybe a body that is similar to mine, this could work. And so it was a great way to give those dresses another life. This episode is brought to you by Honey Love, the superhero of shapewear. You know that wedding that you've got coming up? It yes. is the freaking season, not even ours. Oh. Like the 2023 weddings and even 2024, including ours, are piling up in the calendar. True. So why spend hours squeezing into a medieval torture device when you could slip into something more comfortable and way more forgiving? Now we're talking. And just a PSA, I personally love shapewear and feel my most confident when I feel my most comfortable in my outfit, whether it be a super form fitting 
exciting and thin dress that I know is going to show every single detail of my body or, or mm. even just a bodysuit. No, sometimes not in the what? best way. No. Sometimes not in Maybe. the best way. Not every single detail needs to be shown or even just a bodysuit that's got me feeling snatched in my jeans. So whether you're the bride, a bridesmaid, or that friend who's just there for the free food and open bar, Honey Love's got you covered. And let's be real, we're not just talking about weddings here. Maybe you wanna rock that bodycon dress on a Tuesday as you should. Honey Love does not judge and neither do we. Okay, when we're talking about shapewear, Honey Love's best-selling superpower short is the go-to. It has targeted compression technology. That's right, technology that distinguishes between areas that you want more support and areas you need less compression. There's nothing worse than when like compression is just everywhere spread across 100% and you are just squeezed. Yeah. Everywhere. I would say- There's I, no need. I would say I could, you know what? I, I remember back to my, my um, compression days in sports. You've, you've compressed, oh, yeah. in sports, yes. Yeah. Yes, of course, of course. Their signature X targets and sculpts your midsection without squeezing your natural curves, which we all love. It's designed to work with your body, not against it. And while we all know I don't need this based on our uh -huh. engagement photos, uh -huh. if you haven't seen them, go look at them. <laughs> this piece is also a butt lifter. Mm -hmm. Boost bands on the back of the thigh give your booty an amazing shape. Get 20% off your entire order with the code WILD at honeylove.com. Support our show and check them out at honeylove.com and use our code WILD. Um, speaking of people in my DMs, I'm getting an influx, uh -oh. Lauren, influx uh -oh. of- I don't know uh, where this is going. Well, uh, the people who listen to our podcast, who are more, you know, laid back listeners, uh -huh. have cued in on me uh, giving my offhanded tech advice. Uh, and so I've had a half dozen people ask me, I'm not kidding last week, how I manage my passwords and our cybersecurity <laughs> based off of whatever. Ding, did, did, did I say Ding, something about SJ. password managers and, and secure yes. and like on this podcast? For sure. I must have because the amount of people that have like reached yeah. out and been like, so like what's that using one? like single sign on yeah. or like what two of are you using? And I'm like, did you you watch our podcast? <laughs> And we are a tech science podcast. No, yeah, totally. Yeah, yeah. And a bridal podcast. <laughs> yeah, look, I get it. Yeah, Listen, I, that's that's great. You can I, be more than one thing. I know. I'm, I'm excited that, that now a half dozen more people are using one password. So you so yeah, TSJ is out here spreading the good word. Yeah, yeah. The I, holy word of great. one password. I love one password. I I like delete me. Um, take information off. Mm -hmm. I think everyone mm -hmm. should do that. Yeah. I, I think everyone should be using one password. So thank you for the half dozen people who ha have <sighs> made the most well worded, grammatically correct. Um, Request Outreach, yeah, yeah, for TSJ, yeah, for TSJ support, yeah. and I, I feel so bad sometimes when I find him like the message request from like mm -hmm. three weeks later, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. But we talk about Jeremy it. Jeremy dragged. In fact, if you want to get my attention, ask me a fucking tech question. That's you, actually a you, great. Do you compliment one. Yeah, me? That, that you, is that is the way to do it. If you insult me, yeah. If you ask me to ask Lauren something, definitely not. If you ask me what my thoughts are on a piece of software, you can bet your ass I'm gonna respond. Oh, your DMs are about to. <laughs> be popping Ooh, with fun questions. <laughs> Who are you talking to? You should let me respond to them. Um, that's what we call misinformation. <laughs> I don't understand. Yeah. I don't understand. Liability. <laughs> You're like, this is what I use. Oh, hold on. This is the password that I use for this too. You're like, no, no, no. Jeremy no. dragged me out of just the notes app where I used to keep my passwords. <sighs> Which I get it, it's really hackable. I get that. No, 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 no. That's not hacking. If you put your passwords <laughs> in the notes app <laughs> and not... leave your phone somewhere, hmm. that's not hacking. What if you password protect the note page? With what? The password. What password? Well, I don't know, what one that's just in your brain. The same password that you use for other things? No. Okay, so a unique password only yes. for notes. Yes. And when you open it, does it open on any device or just one? Is it on a per, per device basis? Is there encryption key for that? Is there another password? Is there only one point of entry? If they have that one password, it's done. Or is there multiple layers? Can you revoke that password? Can you track if someone actually enters that password? Can you track if someone enters that password incorrectly? Then no. <laughs> okay. Jeremy literally dragged me and all of my team members onto one password. I literally set it up and then took Lauren's admin access away from her own business. <laughs> That's like, so rude. Just because I know that she's gonna mess it up. And then also, but also this is the issue though. It's a convenience thing for you. Cause you're like, oh, I'll do this later. Yeah. Like you have great intentions. You have never once gone back later 
to clean up your passwords. That is not true. Yeah, you're right. That's Last not true. Last week I literally cleaned up my whole password. I moved over to all the new things. I followed all the new rules. The D- the TSJ protocol that I had to follow in one pass. I also, also remember. I remember I gave you a hardware hardware key for a while, and then you got so sick of it, you took it out and you just took the actual key itself and just put it into like a binder. <laughs> Put just into flo- a plastic just, baggie. Just floating around and just like this little plastic bag in there. And it's like, there are, there, there's access to some accounts you will need that thing for. Yeah, it's I don't just need it. Sit- don't I, need it. I stole it from you. I literally took it up. I don't took it, it from you and I said, this is, this is now mine. Yep. So when you need access to those things, you'll need to, to, to call me. Ken has. By the way, you can never break up with me because if you did, you wouldn't be able to even like change the air conditioning oh, around here. I know, I know. We're, we're at the point, we're me. at the point too, where it's like, if we broke up, I'd have to move. Yeah. Because there would be, I don't know how to run this house anymore. And I'd be so frustrated by the amount of notifications that I got that you were trying to do something incorrectly. Right, right. Yeah. No, no, we would never be able to stop actually communicating if we broke up, if I still lived here and you moved out because I would need so much help. Yeah. So much help. I mean, there's probably a happy medium between the two of us, but my God. TSJ. You, you act like you didn't have millions of followers with the way that you were <laughs> like just just recklessly. I mean, the the access to literally every account you've ever created. Enter. And just texting it to friends. I'm sure that you're not alone. So this is your sign if you're listening to this right now and your passwords are kept in a notes app page, head on over to OnePass. This is not sponsored, but it probably should be and create a free account. And no, it's not free. Is it free? Is there a free version? I don't know. Find a better way to protect your passwords. Yeah. Yeah. No, no. Today's a great day. And so, you're, so your shit don't get leaked. Yeah. If you're, if you listen, if your nudes get leaked, make sure they're the ones that you want leaked. You know, that's all I'm saying. Yeah. Um, I posted a story today. Um, I know that people really, I feel like have a soft spot for just solo episodes, like solo as in just you and I, which always makes me so happy. It's and nice. It's so nice. Um, but I did post on the Wild Till like Nine. Us, really? Yeah, I know they like us. That's so nice. Um, of asking who people want to see on the pod. Okay. So I'm going to, I'm going to just rapid fire some guest names. Okay. Um, and then I'm going to do what? Say yes or no immediately. Sure, I was more thinking for for the good people of the pod. Okay, but got it. Y- you're you also can listen okay, as well it. too. Um, but please let us know in the comments, and also please just don't be dropping an A lister name that you know that we cannot get. No, 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 that's always fun. I like to make sure that my ego is yeah, non-existent. It's just, it's absolutely, yeah, yeah, yeah. just the moment demolished. you thought things were going well, just remember that we can have Ryan Reynolds on the podcast. I, I'm like one part complimented, ninety nine parts just dis- just discouraged. Oh, and disappointed. Yeah. Yeah, disappointed. Anyways, okay, here we go. Uh, two Hot Takes. Okay. I did a segment on their podcast and it was great. This yep. is defeating the purpose of rapid fire. Two Hot Takes. <laughs> uh, Tana again. Okay. Zayn Heath again. Okay. Uh, Keith and Becky. Okay. Drag Queens, Raja O'Hare, love Raja O'Hare. Um, I, I think we should start doing more Drag Queens. Can we get a like- I would we, love a Drag Queen. Can we get like a hit list of people? That like we should like talk like to you hit first. Hit list was not probably the word that you wanted to use, but I understand what you're saying. A hot list. A hot list. Yep. A an attainable list of dry queens that we could probably get, which I, is quite long to be honest. Saying, if we have Caleb I, Marshall has dry queens basically living in his house in Palm Springs. I I'd, I'd go out and say that I've got decent decent overlap. Actually, I have a surprising amount of overlap with drag queens. I do too. Yeah. Okay, Rebecca Black. Okay. Um, that's Friday, Friday, done it. gotta get done on Friday, right? Yeah, I just feel so bad because I think that she actually was able to mostly break out of that except for like moments like this. Maybe she just, maybe that's one of the things you just never break out of. Just like I thought of Kelly Clarkson, the moment, the moment like this. Moment, yeah, you're Just right. like that, baby. Yeah. Brett Maroc. Okay. Um, Matt Reif. Okay, he's everywhere. Brittany Broski. Love her. Uh, she just launched a new podcast. She's funny as fuck. I'm like scared. Like, you know when something's so funny, you're oh, like- Oh, no, we, we would be absolutely fucked. We'd be fucked. What do you mean? I think it'd be very fun. To oh my God, our, it would be so fun. But yeah. I just mean that like, we cannot keep up with that. We cannot no, compete with like, that level of fun. Not like trying to is the problem. I mean, yeah, 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 yeah. Listen, I would love, I would love to make an attempt at being anywhere near as funny as she uh, well, is. Well, let's, let's see where God takes us. Uh, Heath and Mariah. Okay. Pokimane. Okay. Zach and Jared. Again, a lot of requests for the dropouts guys back okay. on the pod. Which is, I mean, listen, I love Zach. I just didn't know that our audience is going to love Zach. People love Zach. Jared's a lovable guy. But Zach, Zach, I can imagine would, would be polarizing. polarizing. Yeah. 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 
One too many kitty. Oh my God, basement jokes. yard. I would love the, but that's- um, S- Same would I, but who is that? Basement yard are those, the two um, the two guys, Joe S- Santa guy, San- Santagato okay. and Frankie. Okay. I've sent you so many of their clips. They're so fucking funny. They oh. literally are like the funniest two individuals ever. I'm pretty sure they're New York based. Their set is ass, but they're so it funny. It looks like they're shooting on like- They look like they're shooting a French on fry a French fry, a literal French fry. Ass. Yeah, but they're okay. so funny. All right, guys. They are in New York though. Well, there's planes. Uh, Casey Neistat. Okay. Okay. I, I think getting Casey to sit still for two hours. <laughs> I can't imagine. But I will say me listening to him on Andrew Schultz gave yeah. me such an appreciation for him. I'm a big Casey fan. I've been a Casey stan since day one. I get, I I have probably watched f- four minutes and six seconds of mm-hmm. his, of all of his content combined. Mm-hmm. That might even be too much. I get him now after just hearing his story. I am a massive Casey Neistat fan. Yeah. Yeah, like his ability to just, be obsessed with things yeah. and then make cool stories about them. He's an incredible storyteller. Yeah. He truly changed what YouTube was. Yeah. Like he, as one individual, pivoted the entire platform. I, I believe it. Inspired an era. Reminds me of you. Um, <laughs> Emma Chamberlain, okay. Lily Singh, okay. Unsolicited Advice, Claudia Saluski, Ashley and Taryn, uh, Bachelorette Girls, Chloe from The Circle. I Ooh, think we should Chloe. definitely have some Bachelorette Girls. That'd be a great idea. Chloe from The Circle, Bethany Moda, Mia and Jerry, Keen and JC, Keen and Ayla. I was gonna say Keen and Ayla probably. Yeah, we should have Keen and Ayla on. Um, Alex Warren and Cover, who are also newly engaged. Okay. Aspen Ovard, I would love so much on the pod. She's in Utah. Well, next time we're in Utah. I've never been to Utah. I don't think we're going anytime soon. I also don't think we're going anytime soon. My fam, um, Theo. Oh, Theo. If we had Theo on the pod, I would die. Theo Vaughn? Yeah, Theo Vaughn. I don't know if, if our audience is ready for that. I don't know if our audience is ready for that either. <laughs> I, I don't know. I think he's hilarious. I, I just don't know if, listen, if, if that opportunity presents itself, you can bet your oh, bippy. Oh, my that he'll be here. Bet my what? Bippy. What's a bippy? No, no, no. That's just the bet, thing that people bet say. My I think. Will you look that up, show? Did I just make that up? <sighs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Fuck yeah. Bet your sweet bippy. Oh. Bet your sweet bippy. That sounds like a thing that gets you to the principal's office. What's a bippy? It became popular in the 1960s. <laughs> Characters used it on a show called Laugh In. It's similar to the experience. Okay, show. Bet your okay, eyes. show. That's, that's, that's a Donna. Enough, that's that's enough, a Donna special. That's enough for info. Sure. That's enough info. Okay. That is. Not, a, more is not always better. That's, that's a Donna. That's God. a Donnaism. Speaking of more is not always better. I was getting a haircut today. This is on topic. And there's a, a plastic surgeon next to the guy that cuts my hair, mm-hmm. like right next to it. And you know how they, they can like give people six packs? Yeah. Well, he like came in to show the guy who's cutting my hair, the six pack they just gave somebody, but he, he showed like the before and after. <gasps> and the before picture was like this dude, his patient, butt ass naked. I mean, I saw oh! full dong. Oh, that's not, that's not a HIPAA violation. This man had a Coca-Cola <laughs> for a like can for a <laughs> cock. I mean, this thing was- Soft? This, huge, huge, huge. That I was, was triggering. Of, literally, I thought to him, I looked at it, I was like, if I was that, like the patient in any other world, I'd be like, that's fucked up. Yeah. Except for the fact, like, well, you know, I guess- Quite impressive. Yeah, that's- Wow. Uh, yeah, no, it, it was wild. How did his abs look? Before, not good. And then after? Not all that good either, but uh, but uh, d- more abs the than whole, he had. The whole plastic surgery ab thing is weird and really scary. I, that I, can't age well. We're gonna find out. I, that, oh. Can you imagine like on a bunch of dudes who didn't already have good abs that now have- Do you have, know someone who's getting it? No. Oh. No. Oh my God. Well, I'm, sure, I'm sure I do. Yeah, but, I'm sure, I'm sure. Yeah. So there is this, we actually experienced this in real time the other day watching TikTok of like this whole baby, uh, whoa, I just glitched. Am I okay? No. I think I'm not okay. No, no, no. Is, You're better than okay. Is beige flags. For some reason I have trouble saying those two words next to each other. Beige flags. Beige flags? Beige flags. So with the red flag, oh, obviously. Oh, right, right, right. The green flag. Yes. The no, and we watched a few and we're like, what the fuck's a beige flag? Yeah. Cause we're like, well, what's my beige flag? And then we really could not put a definition to it. Right. So anyway, I went in a wormhole today of more beige flags and I'm so excited to not share. Not a rabbit hole, wormhole. The wormhole. Just so everybody knows. Um, and so. In 2012, 
the beige flag actually meant something different than it does now. Okay. Which is uh, the beige flag is a sign on a dating app that someone hasn't put much effort into their dating profile. Means that the conversation, the potential date that might follow could also be dull and unsuccessful. Ooh. Someone has a lot of beige flags on their profile. You'll probably get to the end of it without having really learned anything about them. Okay. But now, 2023, I can't keep up with these damn 11 years Gen later, Zs. what have we learned? A it's probably Generation Alpha coming at us. You know we're about to have a new- Who's Alpha again? Is that the iPad babies? Show. Is that the iPad babies? Maybe. Y yes. Yes. The generation. <laughs> Got it. What year does it start? Yeah. What? What is the? Uh, when does Gen Z drop off? When do I have to start like worrying about these little fuckers in the workplace? <laughs> I, I swear. You know what? I'm going back to hazing when Gen Alpha gets back. I saw this kid have. He had a whole bunch of tattoos and he was doing a tattoo tour. And he looked, I don't know, in his 20s or whatever. And then he had this giant tattoo across his stomach, his mm. abdomen that said 2006, I think it was. Because that's the year he was born. That was the year he was sick. born. The year I was starting high school. <laughs> Got it. Got it. That's uh, sick. That's pretty cool. Yeah. I feel like life Gen comes- Alpha is 2010 to 2024. Okay. Oh, okay. So when I graduated so high 14. school. I mean, yeah, we got time before we're doing these that, kids. That is, that is truly the era of the iPad baby. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, but now, 2023, beige flag is being defined as something that isn't quite exactly a deal breaker in a relationship, but is a strange quirk that definitely takes one for a loop. It's like sumo level, sumo wrestler level sweat during the evenings. <laughs> no. Okay, so mm. I've picked out some of my favorites to share with the class. Inability of having a thought without sharing it. <laughs> <laughs> True, that is well too. Okay. Uh, um, my favorite beige flag of my boyfriend's is when he uses phrases that have nothing to do with the situation and make them apply. And like, they kind of make sense, kinda. For example, one time we were making really good time getting where we needed to go and driving kind of fast, but not too fast. He says, wow, we're really jujuing on this beat right now. <laughs> <laughs> the South is filled with isms. That's pretty good. Like the amount of time, like, well, couldn't sell her way out of a wet paper bag. It's like, what? what? Huh? Yeah. Like, huh, huh? Didn't know their ass from the hole in the ground. Like, what? <laughs> it's a different language. Why would one need to know what? It's genuinely the a different language. Between, the, it's your yeah. ass. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, one of my boyfriend's beige flags is anytime I bump into something like a wall or bang my hand against a desk or bang my hand against a desk or hit my head, he'll reach his arm out and step in front of me and go, "Is this guy bothering you?" In a douchebag guy voice and say things like, "Don't worry, babe, I'll protect you. He'll have to get through me first. She loves that about him. That's adorable. She loves that about him. Uh, this one's good. Beige flag is, is, my boyfriend's beige flag is he's scarily good at gaslighting people about small things. He once convinced an entire group of people that mice use echolocation and they would have gone on believing him if he didn't tell them it was a joke. He admits it to it every time and it's always just a silly bit, but it's always sort of terrifying how good at it he is. I think it's amazing. You could for sure convince people that mice go off of echolocation. You know that's true though, right? See? No, like that one's a true thing. For a split moment. For a split moment, mm. I I I was near bamboozlement. Yeah, I got. I I feel like I've I've curved that because I I was tired of explaining it myself. Yeah, like well, that was obviously a joke. I also, I feel like after the whole like uh, maple syrup smelling money, we just right. won't come back from that. Well, also just like sometimes like like you say something that's outlandish mm -hmm. in public to somebody who doesn't know you, and they go, oh okay, You're yeah, like, and then I they, they take know, it as the truth. I need you to know that I'm not someone who actually doesn't believe that we went to the moon. Right, or my girlfriend's. We? My girlfriend's beige flag is that, see, I can't, beige flag, I'm having a really hard time with this. I, you gotta be careful with that. Beige flag yeah. is that she physically cannot survive without having something sweet after a meal. She doesn't even do it on purpose. Her body just starts searching high and low for chocolate immediately after dinner. She she tries to play it off when she's looking because she's embarrassed by it, but it's cute. Is this cute. you? She's like a little fruit this fly. This is you. I, am I a fruit fly? Yes. Am I a fruit fly? Yes. I'm a fruit fly. Yes. You loiter. <laughs> Specifically over sweet things. Yeah, just in general. Un, uh, uninvited. <laughs> I kind of am a, lo a loiter sometimes. Yeah, no, you loiter for sure. Oh my God. Is that he gets sad when I hide my farts. Try to hide it by muting on FaceTime? No, he'll notice and ask me if I tooted then proceed to be offended. Try to run in the other room to relieve myself? Absolutely not. I gotta let it loose right next to him or he will question my love for him. That'd be my worst nightmare. Uh, it, Feel free to never fart in front of me ever. Uh, I uh, one of course, and two, I already am fully aware of the fact that you don't toot. I'll never forget. I'll never forget the the podcast episode where you genuinely thought that you could make like there is a tactic to making farts go away. 
I'm still convinced there is. Yeah, I'm, that cer- was- I'm certainly not living in a world where I, I eat them later if I don't. <laughs> That's right. I have my, my life come is, out of your mouth. My after. life has changed, and you know what? Yeah, I've that tried, was crazy. I've tried to bring up that fun fucking fact a couple times. Yeah. to people, uh-huh. and I got to be honest, you get about halfway through, and they look at you like you're fucking. Gr- they, they look at you like you're telling them that like mice mm. have fucking lidar at in their location. ears, right? Yeah. And like, and then I might go over here like googling to like find it, and then now I'm being served gas X fucking ads for the next thirty days. We have gas X. We, we have play, right. We don't need gas. Yeah, we got it. Yeah, we've got it. Anyway, point is, there have been things that I've learned in this podcast that I would do anything to men and black myself, and they would go and away. unlearn. Yeah. And that's one of them. But because now, when I'm fucking gassy, and I think to myself, <laughs> "Oh, I, well, I, I can make this go away." I go, "Well, like, okay, coming out my mouth should, later. should this come out now, or should I fucking eat this later?" <laughs> it's so disgusting to think of it as eating it later. You're eating it later. So it says nasty. it comes out of your fucking. Other, it's one I of the. Know. Mm. I know, I, I was there. I, I learned at the same time as you. Dragonflies, next. <sighs> My boyfriend's beige flag as well. Watching what, can we get a girlfriend beige flag? Beige, beige, beige flag. flag. <laughs> See, it's hard. Beige flag. Watching any movie or show, he'd pull out his phone to figure out where he has seen a particular actor before and then get distracted clicking Wikipedia links to other Wikipedia pages mm. and then filming in more about an actor and the roles that he's played and then we're not even watching. Amazon Prime's UI <gasps> does a yes. fucking so good. amazing job yes, at this. Yes. If you pause, if you're on Amazon Prime, you pause it on Apple TV anyway, you pause it. I think it's Apple TV and all the connected TV. It will, whoever's on screen, yeah. it will show you the actors and it's, you can click them. And you can, it will then pull up all the other actors, like all the movies there. It, it's brilliant. Genius. Genius. Brilliant. I can only imagine the data science that went into the metadata that attaches who is on screen at that existing moment. Yes. But still, God, that must be one hell of a database. I wonder how they do that. And they have to update that based off of the new additions to someone's Rolodex. And then keep going. I love knowing where an actor is from. Being like, where have we seen this person for? Right. Like when we turn on a movie, I'm like, oh, we saw this person and this person and this person. And but this that person. technology should be on everything. Yeah, like, no, I totally Why agree. are we still having a Google later on? I mean, I don't mind. It's a second screen experience. The problem is we're already having a second screen yeah, experience. Yeah, we're already so having then, a So then we forget mm-hmm. we're like on to. If, if my phone could just at the end of the day go, and here's all the shit that you forgot you wanted to do. Yeah, that you accidentally like, forgot to I don't do. I need screen yeah. time. I want the, hey, idiot, here's the 11 things mm-hmm. that were on your to-do list of which you accomplished none. You did actually get halfway through these 16, which brings that us back to the fact that we now have 14 for tomorrow of which <laughs> you'll not probably do any of. My husband's beige flag is that he always needs to shower with me when I'm home. And not even that kind of shower. He calls them platonic showers where we talk and gossip and it's my favorite part of the day. It is so wholesome. You oh, here we go. aren't the best water sharer. We just need to be at a point in our career where we're able to have two shower heads. Yes. Well, the, the other problem is this. It's fun to shower with you when we both need to wash our hair. That's the problem is that is that our shower head comes directly from the ceiling, but yeah. I wash my hair once a week. And yeah. so if it's not, a, a a, it's not. Who are you lying to? Once a week? Yeah. I am a, a five to seven day. Sometimes it's a 10 day queen, but it's fine. I've never, my scalp would not be okay with that. I know. Anyway, uh, the point is we actually, um, cause everybody asked, Lauren and I fit really well <laughs> when we face- Can, can we do it? Away from each other? Can we do it? Yeah, we can do it. And if you're not watching the video, you don't get any more information than that. Jeremy's butt shelf fits almost perfectly in the swell of your back on top of my right. butt. Yeah. Which is it's just like a it's like a nice puzzle piece of butts. Yeah. Like, can you imagine trying to explain that to your like if we broke up? Yeah. And the next guy you dated, like your butt doesn't fit. It didn't my really butt. Yeah, yeah. And like yeah. you had the, to then exp- you get like halfway through that explanation yeah. before you go, you know, never mind. It doesn't it's not just it's just not the same. I, I get why we're probably not going on another date. It's, it's fine. Not the same. Yeah. I made Jeremy a hair heart and he didn't even see it the other day in the shower. Did you want to describe and explain what a hair heart is? I guarantee that that majority and I need I need I need people to weigh in, in the comments, please. I, I I'm almost positive that most girls know what a hair heart is, is that I took my pile of hair mm. that I had put on the wall so that it didn't go down the drain and continue to clog the drain worse than it already is. And I just made a little heart out of it I for you to, to find later. What our housekeeper thinks when she sees just like random, just clumps of just hair on the fucking shower wall. She, she thinks nothing and is like, yeah, I do that too because every girl fucking does that. 
It's better on the wall than it is down the drain because then it clogs. You you act as if it's an either or thing. It's I've got hair all over my fucking walls and it's clogged. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like over here, like I have a foot bath and I'm just looking at just like what looks hair like hearts. 17 women who have just fucking showered in hair my- Hair hearts. Yeah, I get it. Yeah. Hair hearts. No, I, I, yeah, and by the way, what's crazy is I don't even think it's weird anymore. The hair heart? Yeah. It's not. No, I, I know. Do you know how blessed you are to have a hair heart? I think Tracy it, the other day for mm-hmm. our friend, for her, for her boyfriend, mm-hmm. spelled out his whole name Whoa. in hair. That's that's great. She's going through like a weird like shedding situation though, and okay. it's, she's a little concerned about it. I didn't ask. And this. he only has four letters in his name, so it's not too bad. Yeah, once again, I didn't. But <laughs> my favorite beige flag about my fiance is my that favorite beige flag. My favorite beige flag about my fiance okay. is that whenever there is something remotely cringy or embarrassing happening on TV, he has to pause it and give himself a little five second breather before resuming back to the show. And if it's really bad, he will get off the couch and cover his head with his shirt and aggressively scream. Safe to say jury duty took us a long time to finish. Like I, that and like Nathan for you would be yeah. impossible for that I couldn't, I couldn't watch Nathan for you and Impractical Jokers as much as I love Sal Volcano. I couldn't watch it. Oh, I can't do Impractical Jokers. I can't do it. That, I can't do it. That's not I, funny to me. My skin, I want to peel my skin off. Yeah. I want to get out of it and I want to be as far away as possible. I don't like making someone's ignorance the joke. I mean, it's not even that. It's just the uncomfortableness of like, of just all of it. Or oh, I, can't. I don't I like can't. when can't. people make somebody else who's, who is being polite yeah. the joke. Like I like when people are making, uh, that's not true. People's ignorance is sometimes funny. It's the politeness thing that pisses me off. Yeah. It's but like when someone's like being like a dickhead, like road rage, and mm-hmm. like you can find a way to like make them feel like they're like I I wasn't aggressive towards you, and instead I just made your own aggression just like a joke. Mm-hmm. That's funny. Yeah. Yeah, but I mean that. Yeah. I I, I, joke I is too I much for me. Deeply, I deeply relate on this. Yeah. Uh, my boyfriend's beige flag is that sometimes he pretends to metamorphosize into his alter ego, which Ooh. is a crab, so that he can pinch me and then blame it on the crab. Honestly, kind of genius. It tracks. I will be metamorphosizing into Well, a... Lauren likes to metamorphosis, metamorphosize my ass and call it meat. <laughs> so, and for context <laughs> I was there- I say, I feel like that needs a little more context. She will walk around and if like, I, if, if my butt is is remotely close to her hand and she turns a like corner- this she'll is just, a wildly shared experience between all- She'll couples. smack the shit out of it. Mm-hmm. And then I'll say, I'm not meat. And she'll say, meows. It's Meadows. And that's the story. Next. That's the end of the interaction. <laughs> <laughs> and then we go about our day, like two normal people. So what's my beige flag? Your beige flag? Actually, no, no, I'll tell you what my beige flags are and then you tell me your beige flags. I'll my, start. Okay. I think one of my beige flags okay. is that I'll always use a little spoon. Yeah. No matter what the options are. Right. No matter how many spoon sizes, I'll always take the littlest one because no matter what, things will taste better. And we've talked about this before. They will taste better with a little spoon. Which for little fork. everyone who's not counting already and it hasn't quite like also caught up, Lauren also has an obsession with when she gets her plate of food, she must then cut up every <laughs> single bite she's going to take. Meaning that <laughs> if we're out at a nice place and she gets a piece of hey, Steak. Hang on, I don't do this with steak. I don't do this with steak because I know that things need to like still be cooking and stuff when it's still, still sitting there. Still cooking, it's still sitting there. But I, I do. So do did that. you want to? Did you call out the one dish you don't do that on? Yes. Okay. Every other dish, Lauren will just like. Yes. I mean, it, it, she just. I have like a moment to defend myself, but continue. No, like every small child sees their mother do this. Right. What's your defense? Well, one, <laughs> I think. As a small child, my mom did this for me. <laughs> and, That's a good point. And I was like, this is fucking sick. This is a really efficient way to eating. I love eating. I love food so much. I love efficiency. And I love efficiency. And there's just like, you don't have to waste any time like putting your utensils down, switching hands to cut or struggling. To- Real quick, what's your one and only uh, critique and like thing that really like, uh, frustrates you about making food? About making food? Yeah. That I eat it so fucking fast. That's my number one thing. It, we're all here, right? We're, okay, good. No, <laughs> yeah, I missed it, I missed it, I missed it. <laughs> Why do you cut everything into little pieces? So I can eat it. Quickly? Quickly. What's your one critique about making food? That I eat it too quickly. <laughs> That's your beige flag. It's just so, I love, I literally am so, the moment that I finish eating, I'm so sad. I'm no, like, like, it's shocking you're not 900 pounds. Oh, I know, it's, I know, it's, it's, I know, it's, it's, it I'm really like, is. If I didn't know 
well, you, yeah. I'd assume that I was like coming into I the room food. to take away the other containers, yeah. put a new one there and mm -hmm. say, do you need anything? And, yeah. and then leaving the room. Yeah, I know. I just, but cutting it up is so nice. Cause then you can just like put your knife down and off, touch it again. And then you can just continue eating your pancakes in a peaceful manner without having to cut anything. Next page flag. My, or do you want me to go with one? Oh, you go ahead. You go, you okay. Go ahead. Um, uh, I think that one of your beige flags is- Oh, no, no. I want you to give you your own oh, beige one of flag. mine? Yeah. Short list. Um, Here, you think about that. I'll go. <sighs> I, I do this thing called cricketing when ah. I'm cold at night and I'm trying to create friction. Uh, and by amongst... cricketing, she self-titled this cricketing. <laughs> you're, you're not behind a chapter. You didn't miss an episode. Uh, like, okay, so when I'm cricketing. So when I'm cricketing, so the way that like crickets rub because, their legs say, together. Science podcast. Yes, the science podcast, when the way that crickets rub their legs together to make whatever the crickety sound is. Yeah. I feel like I'm mimicking that motion when I'm creating friction and heat in the blankets to warm my legs up and warm the blankets up. To be clear, the crickets who are using, I think that motion to make a mating call is not the purpose for why Lauren. What? Yeah. How do you know it's not got dual purpose? You So when you're cricketing, you are looking for a suitor? No, no, that's true. You actually, you'll probably get d deeply injured if you were to come near me as I'm right. cricketing. Yeah, it's, it's a pretty, it's a pretty like, yeah, like no. yeah. Okay, go ahead, go ahead. Uh, I think one of my beige flags is I, mm, no, it's boring. Please hold. Can't think of any. Uh, <laughs> no, let's see. One of my beige flags would be, uh, oh, well, and we've talked about this before. There's no better feeling. Mm -hmm. I could. I would imagine that this is similar to when your bra comes off, but like when I take my socks off. Oh my God. I knew it was gonna be sock related. I knew, those socks I knew in my DNA. Get taken off, they're staying to the next day. The amount of socks. So not only does the centipede live in our couch, but the amount of little sockets that Jeremy has taken off on our couch that now live in our couch within the cushions. At least they're not boo-boo socks, they're Bombas socks. <sighs> I wish Bombas would give us more socks. Bombas. And Spomber us again. Bombas us. Bombas. <laughs> Please. Little honeymoon your gift. Socks. We love your socks. Please. They're really expensive too. Please. That's going to be our, on our wedding registry. It's just yeah. Bombas socks. I, I can't wait. That's I can't gonna, wait that's to open up the registry perfect. at all the Tillies just to see if we can get. Just socks? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, everyone buys socks? Oh my God, it'd be amazing. If everyone just buys one sock? I could use two actually. Mm, okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, under the beige flag is. Uh, da, ba, da, ba, ba. Have a really hard time critiquing myself. Weird. <laughs> I'm Crazy usually pretty good at self-reflection. That happens. Um, let's see. I'm punctual. Let's see. My hairline is great. Yeah, look at that. My height jeans are pretty neat. They're pretty good. Um, let's see. My feet aren't ugly. Could be worse. Could, Could be, be worse. definitely worse. Um, I am. You know what was crazy about you passing out? This is not a beige flag. When you were passing out, your eyes kept rolling into the back of your head. That's fun. It was like, so not only were your lips kind of white and your face was also white and you were sweating, but like your eyes were rolling. It really was like you were on the brink of death. Oh, like I can very much feel yeah. my body going, goodbye. You literally said that you were like, good night. I was like, good night. <laughs> 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 well, it's like, I feel like so stupid. Like, like these two small little Asian girls like are fucking like about to like have to like- We're literally handing you juice and holding a fan there for like, this large man. Like you combine your body weight, you're like a buck 85 together. Yeah. And it's like, I'm like, okay, I need to like not fall off this fucking thing because then they're gonna have to carry me. But also like, I need to like not stress them out about me going. I don't think you're gonna be fine. What? I don't think you're gonna be fine. I, you don't think I'm gonna be fine? I know you're gonna be fine. Oh, okay, got You'll come it. back eventually. You, yeah, but you, I, I don't want to, to make you nervous. Oh, no, I'm not nervous about that. Okay, next time, I'm yeah. just gonna fucking go. Yeah, just go. Just go. Okay. Don't throw up, but you can just go. Okay. Yeah, as long as you don't throw up. I my throw up, uh, my remove myself from the room to throw yeah. up, like batting average is 100. It's 100. Yeah. No, uh, that's not true. One time, no, remember? You, one time you did a water barf in bed. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, woke, I literally woke up and did that. Yeah, that was that was not. Yeah, that was tough. That was that was tough for everyone. Well, I also barfed on myself. Totally. I caught the majority of my own water barf. Yeah, and it was just water. Do you guys want to still stick around yeah, with more yeah, of this? Yeah, anyways, so on uh, that note. Yeah, so there's that, okay. <laughs> Got it. When you, uh, hmm. Got it. What's next on our wedding planning event? <laughs> um. So Zane- Wait, What are my beige flags? I need, I need some. What are your beige flags? Yeah, we, we need to stay here for a moment. <sighs> you want one more? Yeah, mine. I want. I want a beige flag of mine. Uh, I've got one. It's kind of gross, though. Mm, go ahead. 
You want me to say it? Yeah. Okay. It's, it's so close to being a red flag. Mm. That's how gross it is. Okay. And I, I actually have to actively look away from you as you do this. Okay. When Jeremy flosses his teeth. Mm. So like, if I feel like I pull something out of my teeth and I'm there's- not, I, I, I wish that I hadn't asked <laughs> for this. us to move on. Is that, so like when I feel like you either floss a long string and if you feel like the floss is kind of gross, you like wrap it around <sighs> your finger and you get like a new piece or you wait. I, I rinse mine off personally. Like if I've got like a yeah, little floss when Lauren pick, flosses every other month. That's completely untrue. I floss once a day. Thank you very much. Would you put, what would you think your accuracy is on a, on a one on one per day flossing? Uh, out of 100%? Yeah. Or to like seven days? Uh, no, out of 16. <laughs> <laughs> out of 36 days. Yeah, out of, a, uh, out of a good round number, let's use seven. I would use, I was thinking, well, I was thinking seven days a week, you know? Okay. Um, I would say six out of seven days a week. Here's my thing is that I'm not a, a consistent flosser at the exact same time. So like today I floss my teeth after dinner. Okay. So let's go ahead. So anyways, so when when I floss my teeth, whatever, I I, oh, I will hate, rinse I, rinse the yeah, you asked for this. Rinse the little the little pick and or I'll just get a new one. You know what I mean? That there's so many in the bag. Guys, so I'm not proud of this. What Jeremy does, Stop. I'm not kidding. I, I feel queasy just even like thinking I, about this. So he'll take uh, oh my god, he literally will take the floss stick. And he'll drag the gunk off the floss yep. onto his tongue. Yep, I will. To remove it. Shoshana, so can... I can feel it from the other room. <laughs> Stop it. It is Knock the it most off. revolting thing I have ever seen in my entire. I literally, and this, I, I didn't know he did this until, I'm not kidding, probably last month. And I said- I, did, I haven't always done this. Oh, this when is I, a new when thing. I, when I do the, the, when I have like real string, floss, yeah. I don't do it, but like it's just Maybe so much Maybe we should faster. go back to that. And yeah. so I'm not kidding. I watched him wipe his nasty ass, placky ass floss stick oh. on his tongue. And I was like, did you just fucking put that on your tongue? And you were like, yeah, well, I'm just gonna brush my teeth afterwards. Like it just doesn't even matter. And I was like, that is the most disgusting thing you've ever done. It's one of those times where logic- I would rather you clip your toenails in the bed. Oh, uh, the logic's not prevailing here. Like, yeah. despite the fact that like, I, I do agree with myself in the sense of like, yes, you are That's then going to- That's a disgusting to, straight boy thing. Uh, if there's a correlation between wiping your plaque on your tongue and, <laughs> and liking vagina. Uh, here I am, sign me up. Guilty. <laughs> Guilty. Okay, we should go. This is, we get this, these last couple topics, these last couple topics, oh my God. Colin and Samir on their podcast, they call their, like the very, like last No one segment. said that we should, we should have them on our podcast. I love Colin and Samir. I, I, would, too. I would love to have them on the podcast. I feel like, I don't know how many, I feel like we have people that come to the pod to like just hang with us and hear about you wiping your placky ass floss on your tongue and they don't, they're not actually here for like creator tech tips. Except for you, you did give some was, some nice password TSJ tips. I just feel like, you know what? It's the side of me that the internet has ever seen, like the right. real, that real side, the that, floss wiping one, the one that sells enterprise API for a living. But yeah, sure, sure. So they call the end of their podcast the deep end, and it's like, let us know if you made it to the deep end. And sometimes, like when I think about applying that to like our podcast, I'm like, let us know if you made it to the end. Let us know if you also have like personality, like. Uh, issues that you- You know what? I th I actually have changed my mind and that's a red flag. That's a red flag. Okay. Latvia? It's been good. We'll see you next week. Goodbye.